It's 9.41. The Radio Wemo Breakfast. One, a space odyssey, of course, the marvellous work there by um, Stanley Kubrick, the uh, the film, and uh, always wanted to kick off an interview with this piece of music. Epic, epic as it is. Well, it's one of the pieces that is going to be performed this Saturday evening uh, for a symphonic odyssey, the New Zealand Symphony Orchestra, being conducted by James Judd, who's just flown in from Florida to, uh, to do the job, and he joins me on the line from Wellington this morning. Good morning to you, James. Hi, good morning. Oh, did the, did the hairs on the back of your neck stand up to that one? Oh, it's fantastic, and then it gets better and better. Everybody knows the first minute, and then the, it goes on for another <laughs> 35 minutes, and the, it's even better. Most people just cut right there. That's gone. <laughs> but um, I'll, I'll take your word for it. It does get better, of course. Oh, yeah. Um, what, now, why? how do you end up coming from um, Florida to, to direct our New Zealand Symphony Orchestra. Well, you know, I was music director of the orchestra uh, here for seven years or so, and I now have the wonderful title title of music director emeritus, so I get to come and do some uh, fantastic music from time to time with the orchestra, which is one of the world's great orchestras, by the way. Uh, is it really? Oh, yeah. It's as good as more or less anything out there. It's just fantastic. They recently came back from a tour with their music director, Piotr uh, Inkanen, uh, from you know major concert halls in Vienna, in Germany, and uh, the reviews were just stunning. I mean, it's like they're the the all blacks, all blacks. You know, the problem is in music, you can't kind of prove it. You know, you don't have the <laughs> World Cup cricket to prove it. That's but right. They're, they're amazing. Maybe we need some kind of um, World Cup for for orchestras, some kind of competition. Yeah, well, tell me how you do it, and we'll <laughs> arrange it. <laughs> You'd need a, you'd need like ten concert halls. Well, yeah, the fastest you? Strauss, I suppose, or the <laughs> loudest. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so, what, so is this a, um, so is this a, 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 a life's dream to to conduct this particular piece of music? Oh well, look, the whole program we're doing is amazing. I mean, it's a conductor's dream. Uh, the Strauss is such an extravagant and beautiful work, you know, written in the 1890s, but it sounds so modern, in, and Strauss uses this huge orchestra, including organ, masses of brass percussion strings in such a romantic way, it's just glorious. And then on the program we're doing you know, some other music that was featured in uh, the film 2001, this piece by Ligeti, uh, which was written in 1961 called Atmosphere, which is incredibly modern the sounds, but they're just blocks of the most glorious sound, and anybody who saw the film uh, you, you will recognize the music immediately. Yeah. And, uh, so beautiful. And using strange techniques sometimes, the wind instruments are just producing the sound of wind through the music, through their instruments. But it's a perfectly calculated, uh, extraordinary piece. What's it like um, standing up front of a, of a large orchestra like this? I mean, is, is the music kind of flowing through you first and then out through the orchestra, or is it, does it happen another way? Well, yeah, it's a complicated kind of equation of things going on, but it's a dream. I mean, what happens is you're one musician as a conductor making music with another hundred musicians in front of you, and the ideal is when you're all coming together, not uh, as a dictator or a tyrant as a conductor, <laughs> but rather we're, we're sharing music, we're making chamber music, and there's a lot of give and take that happens. You know, there's strange gestures you see conductors do in all kinds of different ways. You know, some very still, some moving a lot. But whatever you're doing, there has to be a kind of chemistry, a flow of music that goes from the conductor or from orchestra to conductor to audience. We are, and then we're all one. You know, that's why the, the, the joy of sitting in a live concert hall, as opposed to even the best sound equipment, is something like being at a sports event where you're sharing the emotion at the same time with people and your spirits are sort of bound up in one and then, and then it's something you you can't experience anywhere else yeah so so you would you would hear and feel every single note but by the same token would you would you feel and and hear a bum note oh we're supposed to be able to do that yeah. of course yeah but that's in rehearsals not in concerts <laughs> Because, uh, uh, you know, there's so many musicians out there in front of you, 
Um, is, does it become quite obvious if just one is out? Oh, yeah. I mean, the, the, the work of a conductor is largely done in your home, you know, or wherever you are studying scores. You have to have all of that information in your head so yeah. that if you hear something, it's not really... I mean, New Zealand Symphony Orchestra, a great orchestra like that, they don't play wrong notes, even at rehearsal. They come prepared, but it's more a question of fixing balances or your taste or suggesting phrasing and fixing something if somebody's playing a little bit loud. You, I'm in an advantageous position at the front of the orchestra to hear and balance things. So a lot of different things go on in rehearsals. Uh, you know, the, the re relationship of one voice in the orchestra to another, adjusting. Mm. Um, you know, it's... Uh, yeah, it's a wonderful job. What can I tell you? It's a fantastic thing to do. See, I would imagine, though, if, if one particular musician um, you know, started to falter, tied to a pole at the front and they're given a good whipping. Well, we should do that. That's the last resort, Mike. <laughs> there are a few union regulations about that, I think. I'll have to check it out. Bummer. <laughs> Um, this, I mean, this sounds like a, a, a really um, a great and amazing um, a, a event, and, uh, and and I think people should go and and um, either rediscover some of the stuff if, if 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 they haven't been for a while, or go for the first time. Well, one thing I, I do wonder though is that you know there's hard economic times around the world, um, and in the good times, there's plenty of money you know sloshing around uh, from governments and also from from uh, people who love the arts to, to fund these kinds of things. Uh, is it difficult times there for, for symphony orchestras around the world at the moment? It's always difficult times for symphony orchestras. I mean, you know, we, we always fight because the arts... I mean, an orchestra can't bring in at box office what it costs to put on, hmm. you know. But if we don't have great orchestras, we don't have Beethoven alive anymore or Strauss alive anymore. So it is tough, and we have to go on trying to find... I mean, my great passion is to try to find new audiences, and young audiences, and I promise anybody that if you trust me, come along to this concert, for example. We have also this Berio Sinfonia, which is a, like a happening from the 60s. It was written in New York. It's mad music with voices and orchestra. It's absolutely insanely wonderful. And if you come along to that and pay for a ticket and don't like it, then I, I think we ought to give you your money back. I guarantee... <laughs> You know, so it's all about trying to attract new audiences. And if we have new audiences, young audiences will always have support, you know. And music was around before language. It's something that's in all of us. We all understand the smell of music. We, we can all connect with music in, from all nationalities. It's a universal language without doubt. Yeah, absolutely. What, what, do, you, what do you listen to when you're, uh, when you're not conducting? Well, when I'm not conducting, I'm usually listening to new music that I, I'm interested to perform. You know, there's the, in classical music, we call it classical. I hate it. I mean, it's just, the, the term is ridiculous. Music is music, good and bad. Mm. I have a daughter who's 17, so I get to listen to all kinds of things. That yeah. She's interested in fringe rock music. And I get to listen to all kinds of things, which she usually brings to me with an apology, which is not necessary, <laughs> because I think some of the... Some of the worst and some of the best music being written today is in the rock field. And, you know, there shouldn't be barriers between one type of music and another. I absolutely agree with you when you say there's, there's only two types of music and it's good and bad and, and not to pigeonhole things. That's right. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, all right, well, people can go along this Saturday. It's part of the um, Auckland Arts Festival. Um, yeah, go and see it. Gosh, what a what a great a great event. Thanks very much, James. Great, hope to see you there. Yeah, James Judd, who's um, coming to conduct the New Zealand Symphony Orchestra. And we'll go out on just a little bit more of A Space Odyssey.